I'm going to briefly introduce the speakers uh, today. I will kick it off. The fact is that these dietary patterns are clearly set much earlier than what traditionally we have been uh, talking about and that we do not have today uh, appropriate uh, dietary guidelines that are both nutritionally and developmentally appropriate for infants. And we'll talk a little bit about the fact that the developmental component plays an absolutely singular and critical role at this stage of life that it will not play at any time later. And this uh, has led to what today we want, uh, which is a dietary guidelines that somehow changes that dietary uh, proportion of contribution of food groups that we mentioned earlier. And following me, we will have Kathleen Reedy. Kathleen is a head of nutrition science at Nestle Nutrition. She will be talking about the influence of energy density and dietary patterns in young children. The objective of the first um, uh, analyses was to compare the dietary patterns and sources of energy in the diets of young children consuming higher versus lower energy density diets. Um, and the reason we thought this was uh, an important way to look at these data is that lower energy density diets have been associated with lower overall energy intakes um, as well as a higher diet quality. When we move to the 24 to 48 month old children, um, it's interesting, we see that this difference goes away in juice. All children are consuming a fair amount of juice right here, um, but this difference is huge. Um, and remember, these kids in, in this high energy density group are consuming 200 plus more calories than these kids, and still only 33 of those calories are from fruit. Following a similar theme, Denise Deming, uh, who is a principal scientist in the same nutrition science group, uh, will be talking about the impact of energy density on diet quality. We've seen some interesting uh, effects of energy density on dietary patterns, and I'm going to tell you what happens to the nutrients. Oh my gosh, look at the, t uh, the preschoolers. Sweets are the number one source of added sugars in both diet groups. And this, the same top five, you see fruit drink, candy, sugar syrup, jellies, and cookies being there. When you look at mixed dishes, that's the, the purple bars, it's relatively constant um, in, in uh, diets and in age groups. But what's really interesting is this increasing contribution of sweets to intake. Uh, and to wrap it all up, we will have Dr. Bill Dietz. He is uh, most recently a uh, former head of the CDC uh, Center for Diet, Physical Activity, and Obesity. This shows um, some, some of the relevant data, uh, particularly around entree size and uh, portion size. Um, in this study, which came from Leanne's group, the, um, the children were fed um, uh, either as an as a entree course, macaroni and cheese, and then their intake of other foods was assessed as the, the size of the entree increased. As you think about dietary guidelines for zero to two-year-olds, I, I think we'd all be interested in what we've missed. Thank you for coming.